Mr. Chokuda and staff of parliament, all permanent secretaries and senior government officials here present, the governor of the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, Dr. Mangundia, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Let me, from the outset, welcome you all to this key inaugural pre-budget seminar for the ninth parliament. The seminar being held for the second time in the city of kings and queens has come at the most opportune time, particularly in the aftermath of the recent launch of the National Transitional Stabilization Program 2018 to 2020. The stabilization program is meant to put Zimbabwe on a launch pad towards sustainable and inclusive social economic growth. The pathway has specific roles which Parliament has to play to bring about the much needed economic growth. The seminar, which is running under the theme enhancing efforts towards stabilizing the macroeconomic environment for inclusive socioeconomic development is relevant and imperative for Parliament to input into the national budget, which will be skewed towards the effective implementation of the National Transitional Stabilization Program. As such, I wish to highlight with a sense of pride, following the dawn of the new dispensation, profound changes have evolved over the past 12 months. The distance traversed, though figuratively short, has epoch-defining landmarks inclusive of peaceful democratic space conducive in leapfrogging our economic development. Without peace, we cannot speak of any form of development but conflict. I have no doubt that Zimbabwe is in a compelling mode of transformational economic change, trailblazing towards a secure future which is optimized by improved livelihoods for our people who for decades have borne the brunt of economic stagnation and regression. The economy is beginning to slowly but progressively recover, notwithstanding the fiscal tremors that the economy is experiencing of late. What is needed is fortitude, fortitude, perseverance, perseverance, and a political will, and a political will to weather the current economic glitches. As observed by the late great statements, statesman from Africa, and former President of the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency Comrade Nelson Mandela in 1999 said, the long walk is not yet over. The long walk is not yet over. The prize of a better life is yet to be one, unquote. This is applicable to Zimbabwe. The long walk to economic freedom is arduous, and yet it should be accomplished without fail. To that an extent, Parliament must firmly put this country on a road to economic recovery through passing a budget that is anthropocentric and 
pro poor in character. The economic trajectory of the 2019 national budget must be predicated on the primacy to fulfill the will of the people from whom the authority to govern is derived is aptly enunciated in section 3, subsection 2F of the Constitution of Zimbabwe. Honorable Prince Banda and Mlisa, could you be attentive, please forget about that program. Accordingly, the budget must lay accent on the people's hankering for a better life through job creation and the quality service delivery. That reality should always resonate at the back of our minds as we craft the 2019 budget. In this regard, Parliament as the sovereign representative institution of the people of Zimbabwe must not abdicate its sacred role of passing a robust budget that is in accord with the national people's development aspirations. Honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, as a disciple of constitutionalism, I wish to emphatically state the vision of Section 13 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe which provides as follows, and I quote, the state and all institutions and agencies of government at every level must endeavor to facilitate a rapid and equitable development and in particular must take measures to A, foster agricultural, commercial, industrial, technological, and scientific development. C, foster the development of industrial and commercial enterprises in order to empower Zimbabwe citizens. And D, bring about balanced development of different areas of Zimbabwe. In particular, a proper balance in the development of rural and urban areas, unquote. The operative words in the above constitutional provisions are rapid and equitable development in all sectors of our economy. For that to be achievable, we need to grow the national budgetary cake through vigorous and assertive efforts in domestic resource mobilization, in domestic resource mobilization. That can be attained by embracing value addition and the beneficiation of our mineral resources and agricultural pro products. Why, why export raw minerals such as gold, diamonds, and chrome? For example, Processed minerals can create value accruals six to ten times more of the value of unprocessed minerals. The country would realize not less than six billion dollars, much more than our consistently 
4 billion annual budget. That is why I am convinced that a diligent domestic resource mobilization trust can enable Zimbabwe to craft a 10 billion annual national budget. Particularly when you know that our gross domestic product is somewhere between 50 and 65 billion dollars. That is possible. This would make it possible for government employment costs to come down from 97% of the SNY approved budgets to between 30 and 35%. Furthermore, domestic resource mobilization will make it possible for devolution of power and socioeconomic programs to provinces to make economic sense to the people of Zimbabwe. That constitutional 5% of the national budget that must devolve to each province will not be a mirage. In that way, we can indeed realize rapid, equitable, and balanced development in Zimbabwe. To further bolster domestic resource mobilization, Parliament must ginger the Ministry of Finance and Economic Development to urgently reform the matrix of the taxation regime on similar lines adopted by Singapore and Rwanda. There is need to rapidly move towards digital taxation based on virtual codification of our tax basket. That economic trajectory will guarantee Zimbabwe to attain an upper middle income economy by 2030. Accordingly, this pre-budget seminar provides us with an, op an opportunity that must be used to put the country back on a launch pad to economic vibrancy. Millions of our people look up to us for